Hi, this is Mike from the Intuitive Lens. I'd like to welcome you to this case study. Uh, it's a case study that addresses the workflow in Photoshop, taking a sports car racing image from raw file through to a monochrome finishing point. So it's in three parts. Here we are in Bridge, <coughs> just picking the example raw file. And uh, as you can see, it's a trio of cars at Silverstone, taking this now into camera raw. Uh, just illustrating these primary areas of the picture which I will use to work out exactly how to transform this image. This we're looking for shadow detail, uh, avoiding blowing out highlights, and we're looking for a composition in this image that it's going to show this sweep off <clears throat> and get the cars into a more powerful position. So the first thing we're going to do is crop it. <clears throat> Here we are in camera raw. So we'll engage the crop. Um, it's this sweep angle we're looking to emphasize. So we're going to choose a composition that will enable that to be a more powerful crop. So just stretching out the window here, and we're going to angle, rotate this window on the basic image uh, to reinforce this diagonal of the cars moving from the top right to the bottom left of the corner. And this will be the wrong way. So to emphasize that angle from right to bottom left, we need to turn this way. And uh, we'll make sure we catch the bumper of this uh, Aston on the front right, so we'll need to shrink back a little bit and manipulate that box so the crop is at the most steep angle to reinforce this effect we're looking for at the same time as capturing all of the image that we need. So to watch the last driver's head we need to Choose a cut line that's going to clip that highlight where it meets the grass and then we want to make sure we capture that shadow all the way across and don't clip the right hand corner at the bottom. So we just jiggle this around until we get the most image at the right angle to reinforce this diagonal and curving flow which you'll see in a second when we do the next step which is to create the white balance from the picture that we've got here. So, just looking for a grey area and uh, checking in the info panel in the top right how close to even grey we are at each of these spots. And you can see there's just a slight emphasis away from grey. So we choose the top of the tire there which is probably less speckled and choose that, it doesn't make that much difference just a few hundred points on the temperature on the white balance. So that's our basic preparations done. Here we go. Now by pressing the ALT key and recovery you can see that we're having to deal with a number of burnt out highlights and switching on the highlight control in the histogram window you can see these areas of red here that show <coughs> that's already overexposed so we can use the recovery tool the slider moving it to the right until those areas of red disappear and you can see the histogram sliding along to the left in the histogram window as we do that. So picking, I usually pick the minimum recovery that deals with the burnt out highlights and if you click the Alt key at the same time of course you can see the highlights against the black window rather than the image itself. Um, <clears throat> thinking about the shadow detail here at the front of the leading cars, we're trying to retain as much of that detail underneath the bumpers as we can. So I'm putting in a little bit of fill light, as you see as you move the fill light 
to the right they were making most of the picture brighter and you can see these tires in the trailing car some nice subtle shadow detail and tonal gradations we're trying to preserve as well so this is a balance blacks can be set here um, to the toe of the histogram in the histogram window at the top of the screen so you can see if you go too far we've got the burnt out shadows control on so everything's shown in blue where the pixels are going to go to the darkest value and not record any detail again if you press the alt key at the same time as clicking on the blacks slider you can see which pixels are going to burn down to zero first so you just generally position that so it's on the toe of the histogram curve at both ends and you can see we have nice solid blacks around the tires still have shadow detail in the last car and under the bumpers of the leading two cars so now we'll just add some clarity which is local image enhancement contrast enhancement at the micro level so instead of changing the contrast of the whole image we're doing that at the detail level you can see if I go too far to either side we get a very extreme contrast or a very softened look so we just need to add about 20 points of clarity here and then uh, the same for vibrance now the vibrance control is un slightly different from saturation is that vibrance as you increase the vibrance the less saturated colors get more increased than the very saturated colors so it's non-linear as an adjustment um, so i tend to put about 15 to 20 points of vibrance in on an image like this and then just to give the whole thing a boost I might give a few points of saturation to lift the whole thing you have to watch the red tape on the headlights here and the yellow badge as well as the grill because that they are really heavily saturated also true for the spoke wheels as well so we're pretty much done there <clears throat> and now we'll um, keep that as a starting point for the next step in part two which is going to be about the next stage of noise reduction and uh, masking to give the texture an opportunity to come through as well.